Hello, welcome to the next section of the course, Dictionaries and Sets. This section will focus on data structures related to dictionaries and sets. A proper application of these data structures makes it possible to map keys to values and perform fast lookup, as well as make various operations on sets. Let's start with the first video that deals with hash tables. Let's start with the first data structure which is a hash table, also known as a hash map. It allows mapping keys to particular values, as shown in this diagram. One of the most important assumptions of the hash table is the possibility of very fast lookup for a value based on the key, which should be the O1 operation. To achieve this goal, the hash function is used. It takes the key to generate an index of a bucket where the value can be found. Let's take a look at the hash table class from the system.collections namespace. You can easily get access to a particular element using the indexer. As the hash table class is a non-generic variant of hash table related classes, you need to cast the returned result to the proper type, for example string, as shown here with this line of code. In a similar way, you can set the value. It is worth mentioning that the null value is incorrect for a key of an element, but it is acceptable for value of an element. Apart from the indexer, the class is equipped with a few properties, which makes it possible to get the number of stored elements, count, as well as return the collection of keys or values, keys and values respectively. Moreover, you can use some available methods, such as to add a new element, add, to remove an element, remove, to remove all elements, clear, as well as to check whether the collection contains a particular key, contains and contains key, or a given value, contains value. If you want to get all entries from the hash table, you can use the for each loop to iterate through all pairs stored in the collection, as presented here. The variable used in the loop has the dictionary entry type, therefore, you need to use its key and value properties to access the key and the value, respectively. After this short introduction, it is now time to take a look at an example. As an example, we will create an application for a phone book. The hash table class will be used to store entries where the person name is a key and the phone number is a value, as shown in the following diagram. The program will demonstrate how to add elements to the collection, check the number of stored items, iterate through all of them, check whether an element with a given key exists, as well as how to get a value based on the key. Let's place related code here in the body of the main method in the program class. At the beginning, we will create a new instance of the hash table class, as well as initialize it with some entries. Then we will add elements to the collection in various ways such as while creating a new instance of the class, that is phone numbers for Marcin Jamro and John Smith, by using the indexer and using the add method. As you can see in this part of the code, the call of the add method is placed within the try catch statement. Why? The answer is very simple. You cannot add more than one element with the same key, and in such a scenario, argument exception is thrown. To prevent the application from crashing, the try catch statement is used and a proper message is shown in the console to inform the user about the situation. Next, we will iterate through all pairs from the collection and present the results in the console. When there are no items, the additional information will be presented to the user, as shown in this code snippet. Here we can check whether there are no elements in the collection using the count property and comparing its value with zero. The way of iterating through all pairs is simplified by the availability of the for each loop. However, we need to remember that a single pair from the hash table class is represented by the dictionary entry instance, and you can access its key and value using the key and value properties. At the end, let's see how to check whether a specific key exists in the collection, as well as how to get its value. For that, we will include this block of code here. The first task can be accomplished just by calling the contains method, which returns a value indicating whether a suitable element exists or not. 
The other job, like getting a value, uses the indexer and is required to cast the returned value to a suitable type, such as string in this example. This requirement is caused by the non-generic version of the hash table related class. Finally, it's time to run the program and view the output in the result console. The first program using the hash table is ready. After launching it, we will receive a result as shown here. It is worth noting that the order of pairs stored using the hash table class is not consistent with the order of their addition or keys. For this reason, if you need to present the sorted results, you need to sort the elements on your own or use another data structure, namely sorted dictionary.